G'day team, welcome to an introduction to schedules. So schedules can be a bit of a rabbit hole in terms of complexity. Um, I'm going to try and illustrate you know, what I consider to be like the basics, the fundamentals, how they work and how we use them in a, in a relatively short video. But this is one of those things that is going to take you from being just a, a total beginner to being somewhat intermediate and uh, you know self-dependent with using Revit and problem solving and uh, all those sorts of things. So schedules are is kind of like the calculator that works behind Revit. Um, I like to think of it as a like kind of like a grand filter. So if I was to select everything here and click on the filter button up here. Um, this is just something I use if I wanted to say grab all of the windows, I'd just, you know, check none, grab the window, and then I'm going to have all the windows. But the point I'm trying to illustrate is that if I've selected everything here, this is kind of a list of everything that's been grabbed and then a count. So it's like, you know, you know, there's going to be a 36 split faces and there's 25 windows, for example. The way that schedules work is it constantly reads all of the information that's going on in the model. And then it just gives you a tool to filter that information into a schedule and display whatever you need to. So I'll, we'll very quickly make a door schedule and I can explain it a little more. So when I grabbed everything here, all this would tell me is that there is, you know, 38 doors. If we were to select the doors and go, okay, you can see down here, there's a few shared parameters. So all of them have image and comment, mark, room name, etc. door number. There's a few um, parameters in here. And it's these parameters. And additionally, the if we go edit type, there's a bunch of type parameters as well. So you can grab any of this information, any of these parameters with the schedule and then use it to organize it or display some information or whatever. But let's get into what that actually means. So if we were to go over to schedules and quantities here, right click, go new schedule quantities. You can see the category here. I mean, it could be multi-category. It could be just, you know, you want to filter the schedules, just read doors. You can schedule things like detail items. So you've got um, if you're doing like an electrical legend and you want it to count the number of um, like double PowerPoint outlets that you've got, that's certainly possible. Um, there is an absolute boatload of different things that the, uh, the schedule tool can pick up on. And uh, just for a door schedule, we'll just click on doors. And um, there's phases as well. So we'll just, you know, we'll just new construction, but you can schedule phases, which is interesting. Um, yeah, door schedule, schedule building components. Let's go, okay. So this is what I was saying before about all of the parameters down the side here. They're gonna be listed in here and we're gonna choose which ones we want the schedule to, uh, to, to filter and then um, what order they're going to be in on here. So let's go down to Let's add mark first. So mark is like the number. So say you put one door in, that's gonna be door number one. And then you put another door in, that's two, three, four, five, six, etc. cetera. Revit will count this automatically. Um, you can override this at any time. So it's no big deal if, um, if you put them in out of order and then wanna rearrange them as you go. So we'll just go mark, we'll keep it relatively simple. We'll go mark, let's go type comments and then a, let's just say a normal comments. See if that's in there, comments, cool. Oh, of course, we'll probably want to say the, uh, it's got door size, um, maybe width. Yeah, let's go width. So we want width. So say the way you, the order that you want to read it would be mark, width, type comments. So the, it'd be door number one it will be 820 wide. And then let's say the type comment would be that it's, um, it's a solid core door. 
because all of those all that type would be and then the comments would be it's a certain kind of lock kit so we'll move this up and then that looks good to me let's go okay so this is automatically generated based on all of the doors that we have in here so we've got 38 doors and if we go back to our door schedule there's a heap of different marks they're not specifically in order there's different widths obviously because the different sizes of doors um, type comments are a bit all over the place and there's no comments just yet so what you want to do from here is in the identity to oh, sorry yeah identity data and then fields filter sorting grouping formatting and appearance so if you click on any one of these it's going to bring up a box or a dialog box which has all of them anyway so it doesn't matter which one you click it's just going to take you to that one. So this is the same screen that we had before of um, which fields we want the schedule to contain. Now we can get into the more tricky part of filtering. So let's just say we want to filter by mark and then go anything less than. So see how this one down here is 699. So anything less than 100. So if you're wanting it, if you're wanting a door to not show up in this schedule, but it's the same type as all of the other ones, just for example, if you give it a mark that's over a hundred, it's not going to show up in here. So let's just go. Okay. And you can see that one there has disappeared. We can also, so the filter, this part is if you want things to show up or not to show up, and then the rules that are kind of dictating how that happens. So, you can apply a filter by any of any of these fields that we've added. And then there's a bunch of rules like equals does not equal is greater than less than contains does not contain blah, blah, blah. So this is the stuff that you'll need if you've got a bunch of information, but all you need is just one single number or there's only one specific thing that you want to show up and you can, there's no kind of right or wrong. It's just as long as say you've, all of the doors are a certain comment and you only want the one door to show up, make sure that door has the certain comment that you need it to show up in here. So I hope that makes sense. We can additionally go sorting by, so let's just say mark ascending. And then with areas, area schedules, you can go like titles, uh, title counts and totals. Um, totals only counts and totals. There's a few different things which are about what's going to be showing up underneath. Um, and itemize every instance is important too. When we get into grand totals, so I'm going to make a, a video just about area schedules because they are their own beast entirely. Um, but I'll revisit a lot of things, a lot of these, but it will be good for you to just have a little bit of familiarity with what these things are before we start to really kind of put it into practice. Uh, so formatting is say we had one of these fields that we needed. So say we were filtering by comment, right? So comment does not equal example. So that was probably a bad idea. So let's say comment equals example. Okay. So we've lost all of our doors here and that that's fine. If we want to go to here, let's go isolate category or IC is the shortcut for that, but I don't know if you've got that set up and then say our single, uh, single flush door is all of those. So I just, uh, with our clicked SA, which is my shortcut for select all. Um, and then let's say that the comment for all of these is example. Okay, so the reason this has gone wrong and this didn't work was because I had this additional mark equals blank in here. Um, so that is, if you think of this as like one big calculation, it needs this to work and then it's going to follow this. So it's like this and this and this. So because this middle part didn't actually result in anything, this part won't work. So let's just go none and then make this the uh, you know comment equals example and then that's going to show up here so it's looking really strange now put up okay 
So when you go sort by and then say that there's a header and a footer, it's going to associate that with every of these marks. So the mark was three, it had a footer for three, and then it had another footer for four and six and 11 and 12, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So there was a, there was a bunch going on there, but now it's fixed. So when I was going through and just kind of spitballing and showing you, oh, this button does this and this button does that, I probably should have undone all of that before, before trying to show you what the, uh, how it should work, but we're there now. So we've gone by mark equals less than a hundred and then the comments equals example. And now all of the 820 doors with the comment example, that's all that is consistent, you know, that's all that the door schedule consists of now. But if we remove that, they're all gonna come back. And the same deal with this, if we go none, done, that's back as well. So we've quite easily changed it so that we are sorting by the mark, so the mark, uh, parameter and then it's ascending so it's just going to be in in order heading upwards uh, that's easy enough what I mentioned before as well before I went on that little tangent is with the comments you can hide a field so if you need a field if you need a field to filter something with you can add a field that's not actually going to be in the schedule so you know example for example if we click on example and go hidden field, it's not gonna show up anymore, but it's still there. If we wanted to go, uh, what was it? Comments, oh, sorry, I'm in the wrong thing. There, so it doesn't necessarily have to have a row of examples or whatever word it is that you choose to filter them with. You can very easily hide you know hide that entire field and that's very very common like you'll see a lot of schedules or more advanced schedules with just a whole bunch of fields and they're all working together um to create a very simple looking schedule on the sheet but behind the scenes it's quite complicated and that's uh and that's not too uncommon additionally we can update the text so um say like the titles like six mil header is four body text can be three with markup um, you can show titles show headers that's all um, optional so say we wanted to not show the headers which would be these things go okay now they're back there so all right no whoops we should probably show that but we don't have to worry about showing the title okay yeah title's gone but it doesn't look that very good anymore so we'll bring it back um, you can stripe the rows in Revit 20, I think it's 21 that came in, um, which is handy for reading. And um, yeah, look, we're getting there. So I, actually, I'm gonna change the red because I think that's pretty yuck. Okay, so we're getting there. With uh, up here, you can change the kind of the justification of the text. So say we want this all to be centered. It's easy enough to do. Um, can change like the vertical align um, you can give it borders there's heaps I could honestly spend an hour uh, going through like everything that a schedule can do but this is just an introduction as to if I say schedule you're like oh okay I'm kind of familiar with that so schedules can only exist on sheets you can't put them in views so if we're on a f in the floor plan here and we try and drag a door schedule in it's gonna be like what are you talking about so let's have a look at our view our sheet um, we'll bring the ground floor plan on. I'll just uh, trim it down. Now we will bring the door schedule in. Okay, so. All right, so if I was to grab any of these 820s and then add a, so remember the 820 was the one that we've filtered to only show up. If we were to add a type comment, let's just say that it's a solid core door, even though it's not, because it's internally, oh, it's internal. That's all gonna show up there. And that's uh, that's how these schedules, I mean, using AutoCAD, you probably would have done these in text, I would imagine, probably. Who knows, some terrible, terrible method. Uh, it's an awful program. Okay, this is all great, 
but you generally will need, if you have a door schedule, it usually will mean that you need something on the plan to reference the door with. So we can see that mark number three, and you can I'll actually say this is an excellent point. Mark is generally something that people might not get. So if we wanted to change the the mark field and then just say, let's just call it number because that's what, you know, the, if you're talking to the client or the builder on the phone, you say oh, door number six, you're not going to say da door mark six. It makes absolutely no sense. So we've got door number and all of those, all of these things are very easily changeable. Let's just start tagging. Hopefully you've got some door tags loaded in. Um, these are a bit over the top and gross, but hey, it's uh, I, I just I just grabbed a house that uh, we've drawn and put it in the a stock standard template. So there's gonna be a bunch of stuff like this. Um, generally going into the garage is gonna be an 820 door. So let's just say that. So we know that door number four is a solid core hinge door and it's just that's just how you kind of it's like the key to, to talking between the two of them all of these doors should have um, should have tags I'm just trying to illustrate that that's how you would read it you'd be door for is is blah blah etc okay so what have we what have we gone over we've gone over the basic kind of anatomy of a schedule we've gone over so how to actually modify a schedule, what the fields are, how to bring a field in, and it's the same deal to take a field out. We'll get into some more of the uh, calculated parameter stuff soon, I promise. Uh, just not for an introduction video because that's gonna blow some people's heads away. Um, this is, I'm sure, probably already pushing the amount that someone could absorb in one sitting. Um, so I'll wrap this up relatively soon. So we've, we've discussed how to filter the fields, how to then sort whatever's left from the filter, the formatting in term, uh, which is how it actually displays center alignment, etc., all of that kind of stuff, hidden fields, very handy. And then the appearance also like the graphics of the field itself. Um, it probably seems relatively advanced, but that's a very basic door schedule. Um, schedules really are the brain of this program. Like it, they know everything that's going on. They can see all of the parameters of everything all at once and used correctly can save you a lot of time. Um, so in the template that I've built, there is a, um, a schedule which it's uh, based off an area plan and when you actually draw the area in properly it will work out the site cover so it'll say that we're you know 33 percent site cover 66 percent uncovered um that used to be a calculation that we'd have to do we'd see you know we'd say 200 square meters built area and then whatever the site area is and then work out the percentage and that was just manually something we'd have to work out but Using schedules um, is something that is just automatic now. Once you actually draw the area plan or the site, uh, the, you know, the GFA site cover plan in. Yeah, look, that turned out to be a relatively long, one of the longer videos that I've made for a little while. So I hope there was a ton of information in there. Um, we're not leaving schedules there. I will be back with some more advanced schedule stuff in the future. I just wanted to do a a bit of a dip your toes in the pool for the people who are really fresh to Revit, just so you're somewhat familiar with how schedules work. So when I start to blast through the simple stuff in a more advanced video, you're not immediately swept off your feet and feeling like you're drowning. So as always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you got something out of this and um, I'll talk to you all soon. Cheers.